the show for real estate entrepreneurs. I want to stay on the the, uh, the strategies because you, I feel you, like... You said you were nerdy about this, and yeah. I, would, I would agree with you. Yeah, I'm very this, nerdy this about this. This may be two or three podcasts. This yeah. may be more than one. No, this is, this is, this is good. Um, in terms of like starting a presentation, because I've seen you talk live many times, and you've literally got people lifting and rising out of their seats, and... I just I own the room. What exactly? You own the room. So what would be some tips on for people going in to present to a seller some ways to own the room? Your whole job is to put them in a yes state. So do not ask questions that could potentially be answered with a no. Only ask questions that would put them in a yes state. Who wants more money? Easy question. Who wants more fun? Easy yes. Okay. Who wants more joy? Who wants to sell their house as quickly as possible at the highest possible price? Say yes. Mm. They're going to say yes. When you become fun to say yes to, then when the, when the question is, are you ready to list your house and you're nodding your head up and down, that's an easy question to say yes to. So start with a yes state. So are you literally just asking them oh, yes questions that absolutely. you know that they're going to say yes to? You're asking them yes questions, you're nodding your head, and you're insisting on an answer. So like, do you want to sell your house no. for top dollar? Yes. Uh, no. Oh. You want to sell your house at top dollar, don't right. you? Right, okay. Yes, okay. so use an arcing statement, an okay. affirmative response conditioning statement. And you go through all those yeses, and then there's three steps. When I close, what you saw me do, when I close, I close so well. If I'm in a, an arena with 10,000 people, the challenge is I can't send 6,000 or 7,000 people to the tables at once. All those people crush the tables. People that are five or six or 10 people deep, they stand there with the order form in their hand and maybe they close, maybe they get bored, maybe they are tired of standing and they leave. So I've got to send them in waves. Mm -hmm. So there's three waves that I send people. And this is something to keep in mind because in your sales presentation, you should go through each of these waves until you get the result you want. Wave number one. All buying decisions are based first on emotion and then back up with logic. I've got okay. a Maybach in the garage here at the beach house, $160,000, $250,000 automobile, brand new. I bought it with 1,000 miles on it, negotiated it down to $160,000. That's the way to do it. I've got, I'll never buy a luxury vehicle brand new ever Off again. Lot, right. No. 500 miles on it, you save $100,000, $200,000. Yeah. I have a Rolls Royce in the Vegas house. Nobody needs a $450,000 automobile to get it from point A to point B until you've driven one, then you justify it. So all buying decisions are based first on emotion and then back up with logic. Our subconscious mind is our emotional mind. So that means all buying decisions are based first subconsciously and then back up consciously. So there's a group of people, and I'm one of them. I don't need the logic. If I sit in the car and I like it, I want it. I'll figure out how to buy it. Even should I not be able to afford that thing that I'm gonna buy, I'll figure out how to afford it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first close. The first close, purely emotional. Let's get this house sold now. Let's get this house sold now at a fair price for you and the buyer. I know that's what you wanna do. That's the first close. Should it not close there, the second close is a logical close. So my first close is, is emotional. My second close is logic. If you're taking notes, and I know you are, because you want this badly, Money is math. And so the second close to a potential uh, seller is how long have you been thinking about selling your house? How many times have you listed it with other realtors? How many months have gone by? All this time, what's your mortgage? Okay, man, you've spent $150,000 on a thinking house. Thinking about it. You don't want to live in anymore. Right. And so you got to do math. And I so that. that's the logic. So we do the emotion. We back it up with logic. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. Another realtor will lie to you to get your listing. That's not me. I work with Big Block Realty. They do everything in a different way. They're more honest. The brokers don't make anything when I sell your house. I make money when I sell your house. And so I want you to know that here's what your house will sell for. Here's the time frame. In fact, I have this thing that I created, and I created it for one realtor in Vegas. And I also think, though, it's powerful. I asked this woman. She was at my uh, mastermind. We sell for $50,000. And I asked her. She's on her hot seat. And I said, what percentage of the houses that you sell that you list, rather, do you sell? Mm. She said 100%. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me like I was an idiot. And I, I said, that, that's a fair question. You sell 100% of the homes you list? And she said, yeah. Like, I'm still an idiot. And I'm, I'm going, what, what am I missing here? She said, I won't take a listing unless I know the house is listed at the, at the price it's going to mm. sell for. And I said, wow, yeah. that's awesome. She said, what's the point? 
I got to go back to the seller and say, no, you, you overpriced your house. Right. Then they think I lied to them. I won't lie to them. I'm a good Christian woman. And I said, well, if you sell one 100% of the houses you list, I guess it's guaranteed sold by you. She said, pretty much. I said, no, I'm telling you, guaranteed sold should be your brand. Yes. I and she said, it. what do you mean? I said, so are you confident you will sell 100% of the houses that you list? She said, yes. I said, then here's the guarantee. Your house is guaranteed sold or I will pay you the commission I would have earned had I sold your house. Ooh. She said, love it. Mm -hmm. I said, again, if you know what you're doing, like I know what I'm doing, it's not something you're afraid of. You just say, okay, done. Crushing it, crushing it. Because who wouldn't go to a realtor that says your house sold, guaranteed, or I pay you the commission I would have made on the house? Yeah. I'm taking your breath away, I can see yeah, you taking your totally. breath away. Like, I love this stuff. And so those are the kinds of things that we come up with for people. We figure out how to get into people's brains and, and strategize until we find the marketing formula, just like you guys did with Big Lock. Yep. No, every, that's why you guys, what, 800, 1,000 agents now? Almost 1,000, yeah. That's remarkable yeah. and so fast. And all you did was change the formula. Mm -hmm. That's right. Approached a little bit differently. And then the third thing, so you, all buying decisions based first on emotion. Back up with logic. Back up with logic. Here's yep. the third one. Some people don't do anything unless they get a spanky spanky. <laughs> and so the third close is spanky spanky. Give them the spanky spanky. Yeah, give them a spanky spanky. You know, you, you, your house, you've been attempting to sell your house for two years. You've had four realtors list the house. I, you know, I, I go on the records and I see it's been listed and price reduced and this and that. Jerked around. Do you want to sell your house or not? Because I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time. I respect you unless you get reasonable. I'm a professional. I know that I can sell your home. I can guarantee that I can sell your home. The challenge is you need to also be reasonable too. Are help we, me help you. Yes, are <laughs> right. we going to be reasonable together? And, and the, the spanky spanky is just saying, look, like I do in my seminars, I, I close one wave of people. They go back and they buy. I close the next 2,000 people. They go back and buy. And then the spanky spanky in that 10,000 person arena is all 4,000 of the people that have already stood up, raced back to the back, and bought my $3,000 seminar right now, will have an unfair advantage over you. Mm. Apples to apples, they're selling the house, they're, they're you know, building their business, and you won't. Because you came to the seminar, you sat in your seat, and you didn't let me help you protect the investment you made in every other seminar you've ever bought over the last 10 years. Let me help you. Let spanky, me help you. spanky. Yes. <laughs> the challenge is some people like spankings, yeah. so they like more. <laughs> Maybe even somebody watching this. No, don't call me up for spankings. <laughs> No, that's, that's it's illegal. That's honestly, and I like really, it too much. That's great advice. <laughs> uh, I love the three step close and I love the emotion first, the logic second. But really, sometimes you need that heavy hand at the end, especially to someone that's been kind of kicking the can down the road for a while because they don't do anything unless right. they get spanked. Exactly. To listen to this full Founders Club interview, go to foundersclub.tv.